Hi everybody, this is Bruce here. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Traveling with Bruce. Please subscribe to my channel today and become a key supporter of Traveling with Bruce by clicking the Patreon link. Enjoy the video. Hey everybody, it's Bruce here. Welcome to my video called Cruise Ship Vacation Tips Saving Money Series. This is going to be the first in a series of videos to help you save money booking a cruise, before you board your cruise, and once you're on your cruise. Uh, the key here to uh, saving money is, uh, one of the key ways, is how you book your cruise. Uh, I like to book my own cruises on the internet. I like to scour the internet. There's a couple of websites I like to, uh, to see what the prices are. Uh, the timing of the year, of course, how long the cruise is, the different cruise lines. There are all kinds of uh, uh, price points. And you have to do a little research on that. Uh, another thing you have to figure out is uh, how to save money before you even get on the ship. Uh, get to your location perhaps one day before you go. Do some shopping uh, at the port city that you're depart departing from. Uh, picking up items like soft drinks that you're going to put in your luggage. Uh, perhaps a bottle of wine or two if, if the cruise ship line allows it. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, small things like uh, getting... Uh, uh, sunscreen or, or uh, mouthwash or toothpaste, uh, that type of thing. Uh, the other saving you have to think about, another way to save money, is once you're on your cruise. Um, uh, you have to uh, really be uh, mindful of uh, the deals that are being offered to you, uh, the promotions that are being offered to you. Uh, sometimes it isn't worth it, sometimes it is worth it. Uh, you really have to uh, scale that. Now here's a tip, uh, be flexible on your cruise dates. If you can be flexible on your cruise timing, you could really save yourself a lot of money. Sometimes it pays to take the kids out of school for a week and do a cruise when others aren't there. If you're trying to do a cruise during Christmas or during Easter break, uh, you're in competition with everybody else. It might not work. Uh, you might want to look at something like a repositioning cruise. If you're thinking of a cruise in the spring, the summer, or late fall, uh, you might want to do a cruise from, say, North America to, uh, to Europe one way and then fly home one way. Uh, that's a great way to get a 10, 12 day break even before you get to Europe or even the other way around. You're in Europe for a week or two on a holiday and then you're gonna cruise back on a repositioning cruise back to Miami or Fort Lauderdale. That might be something to think about. Look at airfares. Uh, airfare deals might actually dictate your cruise. Um, so you might reverse engineer this. Uh, find the best airfare deal to Fort Lauderdale, Miami, or Orlando, or to Los Angeles, or to wherever your cruise is departing from. Of course, I'm talking about U.S. cruises here, but it could be in Europe as well. Uh, even look for one-way deals. Uh, one-way airfare deals where you're doing a repositioning cruise, you might be able to get a deal there. I said it, mentioned it earlier, but get to your departure city the day before your sailing date. Uh, you can do a bit of organizing. You can go to Costco, Walmart, pick up items uh, on the cheap before you board your cruise. You might even buy yourself a, a, a another suitcase, a large suitcase, and use it uh, with the suitcases you have that you put on the airplane to repack and uh, bring bring items on board like soft drinks and, and other items. Uh, another thing is avoiding costly delays when you're on the ship. Watch out for the drink deals. Watch out for the uh, uh, the premium food specials. You don't know how you're going to feel the second, third day in. You might not be feeling too well. Maybe the ship's been rocking a little bit. You're not going to be taking advantage of that drink package. What a waste of money if you're buying a drink package that where you have to drink $15, $20 a day of drinks just to break even. Sometimes it pays just to pay a la carte. And that way you can pace yourself and you're not on any pressure. Uh, Pre-planning your onshore excursions is also important. Uh, if you're on a seven-day cruise and, and you've got a golf game in mind, uh, you know, in, in Puerto Vallarta, Great, uh, go for it. It's probably going to be sunny, hardly going to be raining in the winter. But uh, if you're on a 10-day cruise, uh, uh, you know, you may only have one or two days pre-planned. The rest you sort of wing it when you get there. Uh, don't be uh, don't be uh, overbooking it or over-planning uh, it. But yes, uh, look at pre, uh, prepaid or, or, or excursions that you might want to book in advance, especially if you're in Europe and doing stuff like Rome and uh, going to the Colosseum or, or the Vatican and that kind of thing. Um, daily spa pass access. This one's a big one for me. Um, I love to book uh, access to the spa so I can get into the private area uh, that's reserved for spa guests, but I don't necessarily need a massage every day. I just want access to the, the hot tub area, the steam room perhaps, or the sauna, uh, the, the whirlpools that they have there. It's much quieter. There are no children. Uh, they have the ceramic heated loungers. 
check into that. Some of the cruises have uh, passes for the entire cruise just for that. Don't over plan your cruise vacation because sometimes weather can come into play here. Um, you know, bad storms uh, can delay the ship or, or, or can delay you because you might be in bed for half a day and just not feeling too well. And if you've got uh, all kinds of uh, excursions booked day in and day out and day in and day out and you can't take them, you might have prepaid for some of those and you can't get your money back. Uh, be careful on that. Sometimes you just, uh, you know, you just feel like getting off the ship and walking around the city you're in for a couple hours and then coming back. Uh, play it that way. The final tip here on this video is tipping. Uh, that's a big thing. Um, tipping is generally built in uh, to the cost of the cruise or it's like an add-on uh, to the cruise, sort of a mandatory or suggested kind of thing. I always prepay my tips in advance. So before I even get on the ship, I've already prepaid my tips and I know that my cabin stewards and room attendants are all covered in that. I also know when I order a drink on board, it's got a tip in it. If I'm down at the coffee shop ordering a latte, there's a tip added to it. I don't feel guilty. The only time I add a tip is when I see a, a room service a person come to me. I'll give them a dollar, that type of thing. Thanks for joining me today. Subscribe to my channel and visit us on Patreon. Take care.